And there's it pinned into place, ready to be sewn later on. Got some other sewing to do before I get to that bit. So this is the back of the shirt. I've cut it in a curve like this. I've actually left a little bit here. I'm not quite sure whether I'm keeping that or not. And I have now gathered my back piece that I'm putting into there. First of all, I want to find the center of that. So I just fold it, there's the center. My box of pins. We're using a friend's old always tampon tin, I believe. So there we go. It's a pretty little tin. It fits tins in. Now I think this bit here is usually left open. I like the look of it closed. And although I'm taking this tunic in, shirt in to be a tunic, it will still be quite loose. I hope. I need to assess how much I've actually got here. Do I want to take it in at all? In its gathering. Yes, I do. So how do I do that? Don't put pins in your mouth, by the way. I always do it, but I know you're not supposed to. So you get the thread at the end here and you just pull. And you can increase the gathering. I believe it's the needle thread that I'm pulling. They're both the same colour, so I can't tell. I just see which one pulls. So before I move them along and even them out, I need to check, does that fit now? Slightly too small, just a fraction. Just pull it back out a little bit. More. Perfect. Okay. I'm just going to tie those two threads together so that it doesn't adjust further. Perfect. And then I need to even those gathers out across there. Or you can pull all the big Lumpy gathers into the middle. That's another way to do it. Then you get a bit of a, a Victorian bustle kind of feel, which I rather like to be honest. So before I learnt to use this gathering foot, only yesterday, yesterday, day before, I was doing all my gathering by hand and I was using something called Gutterman Strong Thread, which looks like this. Um, it's very good for gathering by hand, so with thicker, heavier cloths, I would still use that. But for ordinary sewing, this is an absolute godsend. The amount of ruffles I sew makes a lot more sense. Right, so that is now evenly gathered. Find my centre again. It's there. Move that back where you can see it on a pin it on. Okay. 
the moment I'm not necessarily sewing this into place yet I would overlock that edge before doing so but I am pinning and seeing what I think I'll just pause while I pin. So I've pinned this on now and it's pinned all the way round. It's following that arc that I've cut. The fabric's actually folded up underneath at the moment to give an idea of the length. So it's a bit more puffy than it would be. Um, there's an idea of what it'll look like from the back. And we're going to have this piece up here. And I'll possibly either have this a bit longer down to here or attach this on underneath coming all the way around the shirt I'm not sure here it is from the side at the moment and here's the front the sleeves at the moment I've just left them cut open that's where I'm taking it in at the sides there there's about about that much I've taken off on each side the fabric and on each side of the shirt. Here's the little pocket that I made with that stitching. I'm going to just tuck those bits of overlock thread underneath when I sew it on. I decided to go for an overlock edge finish to the pocket because I like that on something else I've made. I might take the flap off and I'm not sure what I'm doing over here whether I'm doing another pocket whether I want the flap, whether I want a pocket at all, I don't know yet. And there's the start of the frill pinned there. And obviously I need to sew a new button on here, which is fine because there's lots of spare ones and the bits I've taken off. There'll also be um, a piece here that's all bunched up at the moment because it's too big, but that will be sewn on flat at some point, possibly with some of this Decorative stitching, that would be nice. So, more sewing to come. <laughs>